Hello my dear learners, welcome to my video lecture on robot technology. This is the second lecture video on the robot technology and in this session I will be dealing with robot anatomy, its joints and links. So this lecture is presented by me, Shamant. In my previous video lecture, I had explained about the basic introduction about the robotics, its historical development and then we also discussed about the classification of the robot technology. So in this session, we'll start to understand what is robot anatomy, what is its joints and why are it, why are it or why is it important very much. Let us begin the lecture. Anatomy of a robot. So what is anatomy? For example, if I take human anatomy, human anatomy is the study of the shape and form of the human body. The human body has four limbs, as you all know, two arms and two legs, a head and a neck which connect to the torso. The body shape is determined by a strong skeleton which is made up of bone and cartilage which is surrounded by the fat, you all know that. Likewise, even the anatomy of a robot it has certain parts and we need to study that parts to understand its working to design how a robot should look so that is very much important and there are certain basic parts which are very much important and you all need to know and they are of four parts one is a base link joint and end effector you need to know these four parts which sums up the anatomy of a robot you have it only gives the overview of what exactly are the different parts of a robot but it will not give you in-depth knowledge but for you it is sufficient that if you know this much so first one is base what is a base a robot if it has to be installed at one particular position it should have a base wherein all the other parts are mounted on the base so basically the base forms the support for the robot or you can also say it forms a support for the arm of the robot the second important this is the base here this is the base and uh, you can see the industrial robot here and uh, it is also called as waste so that has to be installed on the floor so that the uh, robot stays there permanently mm. and then rigidly while doing the operation it will not move the second part of a robot what you need to understand is link links form a very important part of anatomy of a robot why because the link is a rigid member that connects the joints so you can just take an example of your human body itself so there are so many joints there is a knee joint there is a joint in your arms so what does it actually give you or what what flexibility does it give you it actually gives you flexibility to make the movement for different parts of your body likewise even the robot also has certain links which are connected or which are integrated links are integrated by a joint so links and joints is very very much important for you to understand so here there is a link so they have named it as link 0 link 1 and then link 2 they are all the links so different links how are the links 1 how is the link 1 and link 0 integrated they are integrated by a joint in between them and that is called as a joint so what is a joint a joint integrates two or more links to provide controlled relative movement between the input and the output link say for example uh, here the link has been named as 0 because it is from the base that you need to count the links you cannot count the links from the end of the arm you have to count it from the base so this link 0 becomes the input link whereas link 1 becomes the output link so and the input link and output link is connected or integrated by a joint which is called as joint 1 here there are different types of joint i'll come to the come to the different type of joints later on but as of now just understand what is link and joint and then the fourth, fourth important part is end effector end effector is that device which is at the end of the robotic arm 
which is shaped like a hand or as a special tool depending upon the application. So you have fingers as your end effector. So what does the fingers do? It can, it can grip the objects, different type of objects. You can hold the object and then you can squeeze it or you can throw it or you can do anything. Likewise, even in robot, there are end effectors which performs different types of operations with the help of the end effector. So this is about the anatomy of a robot. So now that you have understood the anatomy of a robot, we shall understand the importance of joints and links. So robot joints and links. What are robot joints and links? You all have understood what is a robot joint and a link. The members of a robotic manipulator are called as links. So here, these are the links which are nothing but the members of the robotic manipulator. The links are connected together by joints. So you have to understand that if there are more links and if you want to connect that links, you need certain joints. And that is what we are mainly focusing on. What are that type of joints that you have so that you can connect different types of links for your application? The relative motion between the links are mainly due to the joints. Depending on the relative motion between the links, joints are mainly classified into five types. They are classified into five types. They are linear joint or L joint, orthogonal joint or O joint, rotational joint or R joint, twist joint or T joint, revolving joint or V joint. So these joints all go by their name, linear joint, orthogonal joint, rotational joint. The function of the joints goes by its names. So we'll see one by one how exactly the joints actually function. So you can just see here uh, a robot uh, which is actually uh, revolving its end effector and you have understood what is links, what is joints, what is base. And now we shall discuss all these five types of joints one by one. Linear joint. The first type of joint is a linear joint and this type of joint allows a translational motion between the input and the output links with the axis of the links parallel. So here you can see the input link. So input link and the output link is parallel to each other. The axis of the links are parallel to each other. When they are parallel to each other, then you call it as linear joint. Here you can just see the animation here. The base part or the, the down part, whatever it is, that is the input link and the output link is moving. So the output link is getting the input from the uh, input link. And because of the input that it has got, it is actually moving in an axis which is parallel to the input link. So it can give you translational motion. That means it can extend its arm forward and then retract its arm backward. So that is the use of linear joint. So whenever you want to move your move the robot's uh, link in an, in an axis par parallel to the input link, then you can use this type of joint that is linear joint. Next type of joint is orthogonal joint or O joint. Orthogonal joint or O joint allows a translational motion between the input and output link. But here there is one change that you need to note that is axis of the links are perpendicular to each other. So here you can see this is the input link and this input link will give the input to the output link and makes the axis perpendicular. So if the uh, function of the manipulator or the arm of the robot has to be perpendicular to the input whatever it has uh, got then it has to use O joint. So this is the importance of orthogonal joint. The linear joint as well as orthogonal joint are called as prismatic joints because they provide the motion in translational direction or in uh, the direction which is parallel to the uh, axis and then perpendicular to the axis. That is why it is called as prismatic joints. The next type of joint of a robot which is very much important and all the way all the uh, robots have this type of joint that is rotational joint. You can assume your uh, shoulder and your elbow. So how you can move your arm up and down that is got by the rotational joint. You have uh, 
joint elbow joint here and because of that elbow joint you can move in uh, upward direction as well as downward direction but there is some constraint to it you cannot rotate 360 degree completely okay there is some constraint so this type of joint allows rotary relative motion between the input and output links with the axis of rotation perpendicular to the input link so this is the input link and for this input link the output link will be perpendicular the axis of rotation is perpendicular so this is the axis of rotation which is perpendicular and through this axis it can move to a certain angle you, you are seeing here the animation how exactly it is moving so this becomes the input link and then output link is the one which is actually moving so that is your rotational joint we also call it in short form as r joint the next type of joint is twisting joint. So twisting joint, you can just assume you twisting uh, around your hips. So twisting joint, this type of joint allows rotary motion with the axis of rotation parallel to the axis of the input link. So here the axis of the rotation, this is the input link and this input link is giving the input to the output link whereas the output link is uh, uh, rotating parallelly to the axis of the input link. You can see an animation here uh, which is actually uh, moving its the moving its entire body. The axis of rotation here is parallel to the base. So this is the base. It is installed at one particular location and around that particular axis the entire body is rotating and this is got by the twist joint or you call it as T joint. It allows rotary motion with the axis of rotation parallel to the axis of the input and the output link. The next type of joint is revolving joint. So this type of joint or input link is parallel to the rotational axis of the joint. So here it is vice versa of the rotating joint. So in rotating joint sorry in revolving joint the axis was perpendicular to the rotational axis the output link here is perpendicular to the rotational axis of the joint so revolving joint this type of joint the input link is parallel so here the input link is parallel to the rotational axis of the joint whereas the output link is perpendicular to the rotational axis of the joint you can uh, relate to the orthogonal joint in orthogonal joint the output what you got was only in a translational motion but here in revolving joint you get you can see the end effector being oscillated so here this is nothing but the revolving joint or v joint so that you get by the revolving joint so these are about the robot joints and links we understood what is the linear joint or L joint and then we understood about orthogonal joint or O joint then we understood about uh, rotational joint and then we understood about twisting joint and then we understood about revolving joint these are the five main categories or uh, types of joint that most of the robots will have so these are very much mandatory that without this the robot cannot function very easily so this is all about today's lecture and uh, thanks for watching if you are new to this channel do subscribe this channel and share it among your friends because you you get good uh, video lectures so that you understand very easily and always be the first one to know when the videos are released thank you thanks a lot